At first glance, it's just another ordinary surgical procedure. But this is a perfectly healthy man about to have his hand amputated. A convicted cattle thief, he's the first person to be punished under Islamic or Sharia law, now sweeping across the Muslim north of Nigeria. These images, recorded by Sharia activists, keen to display their civilised method of punishment. We are telling people that, look, this is what God said in his law, and whoever dares to commit offences against God and against humanity will receive that punishment. Later in recovery, the hapless thief begins a second sentence, learning how to cope with a lifelong disfigurement. But there's much more at stake than just medieval forms of punishment. Sharia now threatens to dismember a nation divided between Muslim North and largely Christian South. It's not a story Nigerian authorities want told. They fear the growing popularity of this man, the governor of Zemfara State, who's risen from obscurity to lead this Islamic revival. Seven other Muslim states have now heeded his call. He says he won't stop until all Nigeria is under Sharia rule. Do you think Nigeria should become a Sharia nation? That is my ambition, and that is the ambition of every Muslim in, the, in, in this country. They gather in St Andrew's Anglican Church, Kaduna, to count their blessings. Many are Christian refugees from the newly declared Sharia states. All Nigerians are deeply spiritual, be they Christian or Muslim. Released last year from the shackles of 15 years of military dictatorship, they're embracing their separate faiths with a renewed vigour. Let us pray also for our members, the members of this diocese, that the fear of the God, of God, will be in our mind. They pray for paradise. But twice this year have found themselves in the midst of a living hell that left more than a thousand people dead as Christian and Muslim butchered their fellow man in the name of God. Sharia had swept across the Muslim north unopposed until it collided with Kaduna's sizeable Christian minority who feared persecution under Islamic law. Islamic fundamentalists quickly discovered that one man's jihad is another's crusade. It is just like when you fight me, you push me to the well, to the, to the wall. What next? I have to retaliate. That is how the Christians did. This is what much of Kaduna looks like today, after the rioting that claimed more than a thousand lives. But it's not as simple as just a dispute between Christian and Muslim. There are a whole range of issues here that threaten to fragment Nigerian society. There's an ongoing conflict between the country's three major tribal groups, a growing gap between rich and poor, and a continuing struggle for power between those who support this nation's fledgling democracy and those who prefer the bad old days of military rule. Striding into the midst of this chaos, Nigeria's new political messiah, Olesegun Obasanjo, who was elected president last year after 15 years of military dictatorship. He's a leader who has defied the odds an army general who retired, turned Democrat and won the polls. Also, a fundamentalist Christian who broke the political and military monopoly of the Muslim North. He claims Muslim political opponents are brandishing Sharia 
as a weapon to bring about his downfall. Back amid the ruins of Kaduna, the graffiti provides a clear indication of who prevailed here in Reverend Lashim's parish. But it's a hollow victory. Before the rioting, this was a mixed community of Christians and Muslims. And like most Nigerians, they shared a bond of abject poverty, seeing none of the country's vast oil wealth that lined the pockets of the military dictatorship. There's no money, so he paid it. The Reverend says the Sharia riots were about politics, not religion. He claims that the Islamic activists who confronted local Christians were outsiders, hired by supporters of the old dictatorship, who were now cynically and dangerously playing the religion card in a bid to destabilize President Abbasanjo. The truth is that the Sharia law that they are trying to is not a religious as such completely, but it's a political. What do because you mean? The, what I mean is that if you can hear, there are a lot of plans to get rid of the present uh, head of state. And this is a man that is sent by the Lord to lead this country because we have been in bondage. He is a sergeant and the rest under him. And he Welcome. Fine. President Obasanjo's army keeps an uneasy truce in Kaduna. The once feared foot soldiers of the former dictatorship transformed into unlikely saviors. But they are to make sure that there is peace among us. Yeah. And uh, as you were saying earlier, you feel if, if, if the army moves out of here, yeah, okay, things yeah, will get, uh, get, worse. get worse. That is why they are here. The Abasanjo government is reluctant to reimpose this sort of authority over the Sharia states to the north, fearful that it may trigger civil war. There are still strong memories of the last major internal conflict in the 1960s, the Biafran War, an inter-ethnic Armageddon that left one million people dead. Today, the stakes are high, and all Nigeria is watching Kaduna. If there is peace in Kaduna, there is peace in Nigeria. If there is no peace in Kaduna, there will be no peace in Nigeria. That is why, because here is a liberal state where everybody could come. The man who leads this so-called liberal state lives in a compound now defended by tanks. Kaduna's state governor is charged with holding the federal government's secular line. Ironically, he's a devout Muslim who refuses to heed the call to implement Sharia. But Al Haji Ahmed Mohammed Makafi offers no real solution. I am I am accused by both Muslims and Christians because I want to be fair to both sides. I cannot speak for either, in respect of my faith. I was voted into office by both Christian Muslims and even people who don't believe in either of these religions. And once you are trying to be fair and just, of course, you find dissatisfaction from both sides from time to time. Just a couple of hours north lies the heartland of the Islamic revival. Zemfara, home of farming and Sharia, proclaims the state boundary marker. In contrast to his Kaduna colleague, Zemfara's governor, Ahaji Sunni Ahmed, has the aura of a political winner. He's become a powerful new political player, loved in the Muslim north, loathed in the Christian south dubbed the butcher of Zamfara by the Christian-dominated press, accused by the tabloids of profiting from the very corruption he's vowed to eradicate by lining his pockets during an earlier career as a government finance official. Sani Ahmed takes it all in his stride, but then he can afford to. You were the first governor to introduce Sharia law. Yes. Others have followed. Yes. In other states, there has been huge loss of life yeah. as a result of the ch law, ch law change or people wanting to change the law. Mm. Has it all been worth it? I mean, lots of people have lost I, their lives. I don't think uh, it, is any, it is the reason why there was that crisis, particularly in Kaduna. Sharia was never the, the reason. You see, before now, there was crisis in Dangon Katab, the same Kaduna state. There was Kwanchang crisis. Most of it are communal and tribal clashes. 
political and social interests of different group of people who happen to be Muslims and Christians, not because of Sharia. But Sharia is steadily making its mark on the streets of Zamfara's state capital, Gusau. Cinemas have closed. Under Islamic law, it's an offence to replicate the human image, unless it happens to be the governor on the TV news. And gone are the women's colourful headscarves, replaced by the sombre tones of Islam. Matched by the mood of many women, sitting silently in their newly segregated buses and taxis, now forbidden from talking to us. It's just a small part of Governor Sani's Islamic new order. It's all determined and defined. Is the, the, the type of education, the responsibility and the role of the child when he grows up in the society, up to the time he's going to die and then be buried in the grave, even how to go to the toilet. You have to enter with the left leg, you say certain prayers, seeking refuge and protection from the evils that are in the toilets. And when you come out, you come out with the right leg, uh, thanking God for removing the, the dirty things that are in your stomach. Zamfara's schools are now segregated by sex, but not by religion. Daughters of the few remaining Christian families, distinguishable by their shorter headscarves. Theoretically, they're exempt from Sharia. Their lives still governed by the National Civil Law Code. But in reality, those who stay toe the line. Christian girls are forced to attend compulsory Quranic studies classes. And since our visit, a 17-year-old Muslim girl has been sentenced to 180 lashes for falling pregnant out of wedlock. A relatively benevolent ruling, given some of the other punishments now in store. And you're prepared to order the beheading of people if they commit an offence? Yes, that is the dictates of Sharia. All Muslims knew, know about it. What's happened to the crime rate here since you introduced very, it? Very, in fact, it's virtually no crime. It's crime-free because the percentage of crime is uh, compared to what obtained before Sharia. Uh, I think it's over 90% has been eradicated completely. Sharia has proved to be hugely popular in this community, sick of the crime and corruption that inflicts all Nigeria. Discrimination against Christians and women deemed a small price to pay. In a deliberate display of transparency, Zamfara's administrators now meet in public. Governor Sani knows politics is all about perception and pragmatism. The beard is now obligatory for every pious Muslim male. No one seems to notice the clean-shaven pre-Sharia portrait of the governor, taken barely 12 months ago. But Sani Ahmed is on a dangerous political pilgrimage. He's turned Zamfara state away from Nigeria's secular ideals and is now faced firmly towards Mecca. You see, if you want to know what Sharia is all about, the true model of Sharia, you go to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is a country in the, 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 the number one country in the world that is implementing Sharia according to Islamic rules and regulations. So is Saudi Arabia a role model for you? Yeah, that is our model. It's the kind of provocative statement that sends shudders through Nigeria's secular federal government. And we're about to witness the fragility of Christian Muslim unity as Governor Sani officiates over the annual induction ceremony of the National Youth Service Corps. All university graduates are required to undergo 10 months community service before starting their careers. It's intended as a nation-building exercise. Christian Southerners serving here in the north, Muslim Northerners going south to the big smoke of the cities. To build a united 
build the United Egalitarian society. society and a great nation. And a great nation. So help me God. So help me God. Allahu Akbar. Both sides used today's parade as a political point-scoring exercise. For the federal government, it's living proof that Nigeria's youth will put nationalism before religion. But for Governor Sani, a very different spin. Their presence, he says, evidence that the Christian South is prepared to endorse his Sharia state by sending their sons and daughters north for national service. I stand before you here today and assure you that you are safe and sound in Zampara State, inshallah. As the official entourage departs, parade suddenly unravels into protest. The truth is, this great show of national unity in the face of adversity is nothing more than a fabrication. Most of these students are Christians. They claim the governor has lured them north with promises of extra allowances or danger money. Came from a party some places yeah, just because of the promises we saw on papers. The governor of Zambra State promises a lot of things because the more the risk, the more benefit. Yes. Yes. So they are expecting more benefit. More benefit. More benefit. More benefit. Yeah. So they promise yes. money, but the money is not there. Yes. 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 The money is not there. The place is before that because it's come. We don't know our fate after here. Where we are? Yes. 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 Our yes. Yes. We are being. We are given the assurance that everything is calm now. We outside here, we don't know what happened. Furious federal security officials who minutes earlier welcomed our presence now order troops to silence the students and stop us filming. They're angered by this PR disaster and by the amount of time we're spending with the governor, his growing popularity and militancy they regard as a threat to national security. Do you think Nigeria should become a Sharia nation? That is my ambition, and that is the ambition of every Muslim in, the, in, in this country. We want Sharia to be implemented for all Muslims in Nigeria, while the Christian will be governed by the common law. Christians watching this in Nigeria would be very angered by those comments, the things you've just said then. H how will they be angered? That but is my own uh, opinion. <laughs> And I'm entitled to my own opinion as a, in a democratic society. Back in Kaduna, local Christians are far from convinced, and many have already fled the city. But Reverend Yashim isn't going anywhere. His own son, killed in the riots, is buried on a hill overlooking his parish. Whether, whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whether you like it or not, you are bound to die. And uh, I felt very happy because my son said, Daddy, if I died, thank you that I, I would be with the Lord. Perhaps it's little more than blind faith. He's staking the lives of his 500 remaining parishioners on the ability of the Abbasanjo government to succeed in achieving national unity when all before them had failed. Burdened by this huge responsibility, he can do little more than pray that the rest of his congregation doesn't end up on this hillside. Do you think Nigeria should become a Sharia nation? That is my ambition, and that is the ambition of every Muslim in, the, in, in this country.
they gather in St Andrew's Anglican Church, Kaduna, to count their blessings. Many are Christian refugees from the newly declared Sharia states. 